Good morning and welcome to this presentation with Nordic Waterproofing. Uh, my name is Eric Castle. I'm an analyst here at ABG and today I have the pleasure of, of hosting Martin uh, Ehrlich here with us, uh, CEO of Nordic Waterproofing and he'll give a about 20 minute presentation and we'll do a sh short uh, Q&A after. Uh, so without further ado, uh, please go ahead Martin, the floor is okay. yours. Thank you very much. Uh, morning everybody, thanks for listening in. Uh, we can move on to uh, uh, page two, thank you. Uh, our business case um, uh, is started uh, with the core business, uh, waterproofing, uh, waterproofing material, uh, bitumen based or synthetic rubber based, which we manufacture and we also install ourselves in uh, several countries. On this basis, uh, we've developed uh, a larger uh, portfolio uh, over the last four years, uh, which is uh, very much geared towards uh, sustainability. Uh, our core material, uh, the legacy business of waterproofing, uh, is extremely durable material. We are talking about 50 years plus. So that in itself obviously is a positive uh, in terms of sustainability. But uh, over the last four years, we've increased our portfolio in uh, basically three directions. Uh, the first one is uh, wood-based prefabricated elements, uh, which we manufacture and uh, which obviously are a CO2 friendly solution. Uh, wood actually absorbs CO2 versus cement, which uh, uh, produces a lot of CO2. So a, a very favorable solution in terms of uh, uh, climate change. The second uh, diversification we've made is uh, green infrastructure, basically uh, uh, green uh, surfaces on, on buildings, on roofs, uh, but also on uh, public uh, areas. We've entered that business uh, almost three years ago and are uh, expanding it. Uh, basically right now in mainly in Sweden, but uh, uh, we have a focus on all the Nordic countries. And the, the third avenue we've started in Finland uh, uh, last year is uh, solar panels, which we, we install obviously clean energy solution. Uh, yeah, next page please. So this gives you just a, a quick image of uh, where our products and solutions go on a, a typical flat roof building. That's the, the biggest part of uh, our market. And you can see that we, we are involved in pretty much everything on the outside of the building. Uh, bitumen membranes, uh, synthetic rubber membranes, insulation, which we don't produce but in, install and all sorts of uh, accessories which go into waterproofing uh, such a building. And uh, as I mentioned, also prefabricated facade and roof elements, uh, which we install on, on flat roof buildings. Uh, next page, uh, you can see uh, a pitched roof, uh, sort of a, a family type house, which, which we also uh, address in our offer. And again, uh, roofing obviously is the, the key part of what we're doing there, uh, but we also expanded into the surroundings of uh, uh, a house uh, with the ponds, for example, uh, a business uh, which we do in uh, Benelux, uh, where our waterproofing material uh, allows to create a, uh, either a pond, landscaping pond, or a swimming pond, which uh, is, is a solution where you basically replace a swimming pool with a natural, more natural environment. Uh, you don't need to use chlorine, etc. So again, uh, a friendly, environmentally friendly solution, which is gaining traction in, in most uh, countries in Europe. Moving on to page uh, five. Uh, we uh, not only manufacture material, as I mentioned, but we also install it. Uh, waterproofing material, the, the prefabricated elements we produce, we also install ourselves uh, if the customers uh, require that. We uh, make a flooring in industrial buildings or on ships. Uh, this business is mainly present in, in Finland uh, at this point, but again, we're going to expand it geographically. Green infrastructure we have uh, mentioned, and uh, again, we produce the, the sedum mats, but we also install them if the customer requires that. And solar panels, uh, we basically insource. We don't manufacture solar panels, but we install them on roofs and uh, other areas. Uh, moving into page uh, six, uh, 
this this shows you the sales channels we are we are using for our manufactured products. Uh, uh, most of what we sell goes directly to specialized contractors, installers, uh, which can be either our own installers owned uh, in, in Finland uh, or a franchise uh, system in Denmark or independent roofing contractors. Uh, and that's mainly the case in uh, Sweden and, uh, and Norway to a large extent. Uh, the uh, roofing, uh, waterproofing contractor is usually uh, used by the general contractor. General contractors don't do this type of jobs uh, themselves. And uh, when we sell to independent roofing contractors, we, we have a very strong, sticky relationship with them. We, uh, we're talking about uh, small to medium-sized companies, uh, quite often family-owned companies, uh, uh, who we help in, in many respects. We don't just uh, supply our material, but we help them in terms of their marketing, in terms of their assistance in some cases, in terms of legal issues, uh, guarantee issues. So we have a very usually long-standing and uh, close relationship uh, with them. 30% uh, of our product goes through builders merchants, uh, distribution chains there. Uh, the relationship is not uh, that uh, close in the sense that uh, they are large uh, businesses usually who, who basically take care of all their business aspects uh, themselves. Uh, but it's an important outlet, especially uh, when you ultimately want to sell to smaller independent contractors who uh, like to uh, take delivery of uh, everything they need for a specific job in one go. So at the builders merchants, they can find all the material they need, all the equipment, etc. they need for a job. Whereas the larger uh, roofing contractors, which sell directly to, uh, can take a whole truck of our product from our plant and uh, use it directly on the, on the job site. Moving on to page uh, seven. <clears throat> it gives you a, a picture of our footprint, so uh, we are focused on, on the Nordic countries, but uh, we have significant operations in uh, uh, Northern Europe, uh, Continental Europe, Benelux, uh, uh, Poland, UK, uh, Germany, uh, also Switzerland and Austria are uh, significant markets uh, for us. We manufacture in Scandinavia and, uh, and Benelux and export, uh, especially the synthetic rubber products uh, through, throughout uh, Europe. Our exposure to cyclicality is favorable. Uh, half of what we do goes into renovation, which is basically a stable market where, which evolves with uh, GDP. Uh, new build uh, can be cyclical and uh, it's about 50% of uh, what we do. Uh, I would add that in Scandinavia, cyclicality has been relatively uh, soft. I would say that there has been a housing boom in Denmark a few years ago, but uh, that's uh, uh, that's the exception. So even a new build uh, uh, in our geography, uh, demand is relatively stable throughout the years. Moving on to page eight, uh, I've mentioned uh, we've had a relatively active acquisition strategy since uh, 2016, since our IPO. Uh, we have uh, made a number of acquisitions, uh, all of them mainly geared toward uh, sustainability, the, the wood-based elements I've mentioned, the green infrastructure and the solar panels. Uh, but we also have an uh, acquisition drive towards increasing our portfolio of products and services. Uh, our customers are usually looking for a one-stop uh, shop uh, opportunity. So they like uh, usually our service level and uh, it means that uh, we're able to sell uh, adjacent uh, product categories to them. And uh, we, we've made a number of acquisitions in that direction, which uh, uh, allow us to increase uh, the breadth of our portfolio. In some businesses, uh, like the synthetic rubber membranes, we also have a downstream integration strategy. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, synthetic rubber roof membranes can be prefabricated in a shop. 
So basically, we'll measure out the roof and then uh, create the, the whole waterproofing area uh, within a plant and ship it to the roof where it is installed extremely fast. Uh, you can't do that with the bitumen base where you basically glue each roll individually on the on the roof, but in synthetic rubber, uh, we are active in prefabrication and we have shops of, of prefabrication in several European countries. Uh, we have uh, uh, slowed down a bit uh, in terms of acquisitions uh, last year uh, for for a number of reasons, of course, uh, the pandemic uh, makes it slightly more complicated to make acquisitions, but we have had a very strong start this year, uh, already made two acquisitions, and we are quite confident that we'll make a number of other acquisitions this year. So we're, we are back uh, uh, full steam in terms of our acquisition strategy. Moving on to page uh, uh, 9 and 10, uh, I want to give you a short update on our uh, results. Uh, in 2020. Uh, some of you might have followed our quarterly call, but uh, uh, if we can move on to the next page, you can see uh, uh, that we've had uh, uh, positive sales and margin development in spite of the pandemic. We, we haven't seen any significant impact uh, on the pandemic, certainly on the general demand. And we've also been fortunate uh, to, to be able to operate our plants and uh, job sites throughout uh, 2020, we've seen a slightly uh, more, uh, we've seen slightly more cases uh, in the beginning of this year, uh, no, no significant impact, but uh, especially in Finland, uh, there, there has been a slight increase of uh, cases and uh, there, there might be an impact from that. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, renewed acquisition drive uh, with the, the solar panel uh, company in Finland, uh, uh, one waterproofing contract uh, in Norway, big partner, where we acquired 70% in January, and uh, the pond and landscaping company Gauris in Netherlands, uh, where we acquired 51% in February, uh, which is an extension of um, our uh, Belgian uh, subsidiary History Pond, which is the specialist in ponds and uh, swimming ponds. So we've started to extend that concept uh, to, to another country. Uh, we plan to do the same when an opportunity arises for solar panel installations. Moving on to uh, uh, page 11, you can see the, the figures. Uh, uh, I mentioned we had uh, positive development in sales. You can see we have a 7% increase, uh, uh, 2020 versus uh, 2019. There was a, a slightly negative effect from the stronger SEC. In terms of uh, uh, profitability, we've made significant progress in 2020, and we're now at quite, quite a high level historically. Uh, we have an EBITDA margin of 13.8%. And in terms of uh, our return on capital employed, Rosie, we are also significantly above uh, our target. Our target uh, uh, through the years is 13%, and we are now above 15% right now. Uh, the margin uh, performance was driven uh, by volumes to some extent, uh, some operational improvements. Uh, we have had a, a good cost control of our raw materials. And uh, there's also been a bit of a cost avoidance uh, due to the pandemic with uh, reduced travel. Obviously, that's that's not going to, to last forever. But uh, I would say the pandemic uh, uh, probably has increased our productivity, like, like is the case for, for, for most companies. Moving on to page 12. You can see that cash flow has been especially favorable. We've had a very strong cash conversion. Again, we're not going to continue above 100%, of course, uh, this year, but uh, we've been able to reduce our working capital. Basically, what we've done, we've built up some working capital to prepare for the effect of the pandemic, and uh, we have now uh, come down again at the end of the year. So significant cash generation. 
On the next page, uh, you see a summary of our financial targets. Uh, those, those basically haven't changed. And you can see that we, we've ticked all the boxes. So we, we have sales growth, which we believe is uh, slightly more than the general market. We, we believe we have taken uh, some market share again in 2020. Our profitability, I mentioned, is uh, in excess of uh, the 13% ROSI target. And the capital structure is very strong right now. We have a, a target of uh, net debt on EBITDA to be at or below uh, three times. And uh, right now we are close to zero at the end of uh, 2020 and also in the first quarter. And last but not least, we have a, a target of distributing 50% plus of our net income as dividend. And uh, we have a proposal to the General Assembly to uh, uh, distribute 10 sec uh, per share, uh, which is uh, five and a half uh, uh, regarding 2020 and four and a half, which we initially intended to distribute on 2019 and which we postponed because of the pandemic. So we are now proposing to distribute uh, uh, the sum of the two um, after the, the next uh, General Assembly in April, uh, 10 sec per share. Moving on to page uh, 14, uh, we will to, to uh, sum it up. Uh, uh, we believe there's a number of reasons to, to invest in uh, Nordic waterproofing. We have uh, strong market positions. I mentioned the strong link we have to our customers and also uh, the markets we operate in are quite consolidated. We have a strong emphasis and a good portfolio of sustainable solutions and we plan to expand uh, this part of our business. Uh, low cyclicality. A very strong balance sheet right now, and in terms of a dividend, a uh, relatively high yield for our shareholders. So moving on, I think uh, we are ready to uh, take your questions. Uh, uh, please uh, shoot. Uh, thank you for the presentation, Martin. Um, and I'll jump right into questions. Uh, so your core business is uh, is kind of mature, uh, but you have this this goal of of growing above underlying markets. Uh, so what sort of initiatives have you undertaken or plan to undertake in order to achieve this above market growth? Yeah, I think uh, the the key uh, to that obviously is the acquisition strategy. But in terms of the the existing portfolio, uh, what we focus very much on is. Uh, uh, service excellence. So our products in some cases are commodities and uh, basically a number of other people are able to, to make them and even at the uh, comparable quality. But where we uh, put the emphasis is really in terms of uh, the speed and reliability of our service, our delivery to customers. And as I mentioned, the, the adjacent uh, help we can provide our customers. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then this this great core business within bitumen products generates a lot of cash, but has limited reinvestment needs. So, what's kind of your plan, or should I say, priority of of allocating this excess capital going forward? Well, as as we've seen, uh, we we distribute uh, a good dividend. That's obviously one one outlet, but the, the key emphasis on acquisitions. And uh, as I mentioned, we we again. Uh, uh, moving into an active uh, phase uh, this year. Perfect. And then when it comes to M&A, uh, what's sort of the most interesting areas you're looking at? And are there any additional businesses outside of your current operations that you, you might be looking at? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, again, the emphasis clearly is sustainable solutions. And at this uh, point in time, I think we, we are focusing on extending the, the platforms we have already. So. We usually move into a new type of uh, product or service in one country, uh, like prefabricated elements in, in Denmark, for example, initially. And then we try to uh, copy-paste that into, the, uh, into basically all countries where we have a good uh, foothold. So we, we are uh, emphasizing this process for, for the different platforms we, we mentioned here. 
and uh, basically trying to extend whatever we do in Sweden or Finland or Denmark to, to all the Nordic countries and potentially also uh, Europe and especially Benelux where we have a strong foothold already. Um, and, and given that you have, as you said, a very healthy balance sheet as of now, um, are you considering larger, uh, say, transformative deals or is it mostly smaller companies as you've acquired in the past? Yeah, I think we continue to focus on small to medium sized companies. The reason for that is uh, uh, obviously there's a lower risk. Uh, quite often we, we have a sort of a one on one conversation with the, the shareholders. Usually it's companies we we have known in the past. Uh, we are very careful about um, trying to get the management on board and keeping it on board uh, by, by giving them also the possibility to, to have shares in, in, the, in the venture. And all of that is, uh, is easier to do with the small and medium-sized companies. So I think we will continue in that direction. I agree. Uh, and then I think I have time for one last question. Um, so your gross margin has kind of fluctuated between mid-20s to, to high-20s. And I think we're yeah. kind of in the upper range right now. Um, could you kind of go into to the key components affecting the margins, say, for example, raw materials and competition, uh, and kind of your view on the current situation and where we might be moving uh, going forward? Yeah, uh, really, I think raw materials, as you say, that's a key ingredient in, in our legacy business. Uh, that's 80% of our total cost, a very big proportion. And there we have seen a, a relatively favorable, quite favorable uh, situation in 19 and 20. Uh, which means that we, we don't see any additional improvement in that area. We might have a, a bit of price pressure, uh, which we then after a while usually are able to pass on to customers, but we, we don't uh, see any further reduction in our input uh, costs. In terms of the, the top line, uh, we are not, uh, we don't have any significant concern. We see strong demand levels continue. And in terms of the competitive landscape, uh, we don't see any immediate uh, right now. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you very much, Martin, for doing this with us today. Uh, and also thank you to, to everyone attending this presentation. Hope to see yeah. you next time. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye.